Hi, Maddie. My name is Pam. I'm your patient advocate manager. Well, hello, Pam. Am I ever glad you're here. I have a lot of questions for Dr. Dialysis about my anemia treatment. Here's the doctor now. Hello, Dr. Dialysis. Hi, Pam. Hello, Maddie. How are you feeling today? Well, doctor, actually, I am a little worried. I have a lot of questions for you about my anemia. <laughs> well, Maddie, that's why Pam and I are here today. There's no need to worry. We'll walk you through everything. Why don't we start by explaining exactly what anemia is? First, anemia means that a person has a lower than normal amount of red blood cells in their blood. A simple blood test called the hemoglobin level is the best way to determine if a person has anemia. Many patients do not have any symptoms associated with their anemia. Those that do often report general tiredness and low energy levels. Some patients can become noticeably short of breath when they exert themselves. Hemoglobin is the molecule in red blood cells that carries and delivers oxygen everywhere in the body. Right, Dr. Dialysis? Exactly, Pam. I often describe red blood cells as being like a long train with many cars, with each car representing a hemoglobin molecule. The train travels to the lungs where oxygen is loaded into the cars. Then the train travels throughout the circulatory system. As it does so, it unloads the oxygen to cells that need it. And these little trains don't run for very long. Red blood cells survive, on average, for only 120 days. Deep inside your bones, in your bone marrow, new red blood cells are constantly being made and filled with hemoglobin. What does this have to do with my kidneys, though? You see, Maddie, the kidneys do more than just clean your blood. They also make two very important hormones, activated vitamin D, which is critically important in maintaining healthy bones, and erythropoietin, or EPO for short, the other hormone made in the kidney, plays a key role in preventing anemia. EPO produced in the kidneys travels to the bones and tells your bone marrow to make new red blood cells. You see, Maddie, hormones are chemicals made by one organ, which then travel to other organs in order to deliver their messages. Your kidneys have sensors that monitor your hemoglobin levels and figure out how much of the hormone EPO to release to keep those levels normal. So when the kidneys are weak, they can't make enough EPO and my bone marrow doesn't get the message to make more red blood cells? Exactly, Maddie. And this is why many patients on dialysis, as well as many patients with chronic kidney disease, can develop anemia and can benefit from receiving EPO. Aside from the EPO shots, I also get iron injections to help treat my anemia, right? Iron is one of the main components of hemoglobin. Without enough iron, your body can't make enough red blood cells, and you can become anemic. The most common way to become anemic is through bleeding. Bleeding can deplete the body of both red blood cells and iron, a real double whammy. That's right, Pam. Imagine inside your bones there is a giant factory where red blood cells are manufactured. The speed of the conveyor belt is managed by EPO. And the truth is, hemodialysis patients lose a little bit of blood with each treatment. That's right, Pam. Additionally, taking iron supplements orally doesn't always work. Here's another question for you, doctor. Every two weeks, the dialysis center gives me lab results. I noticed my hemoglobin levels never match the normal range listed on the printout from the lab. Why is that? You see, over the years, research has taught us that maintaining hemoglobin in a targeted range lower than what is considered normal is best for our patients on dialysis, and also for those patients with chronic kidney disease who are not yet on dialysis. Clinical studies have consistently shown that patients who receive increased doses of EPO and iron to truly normalize the body's hemoglobin levels may be at risk for developing complications such as blood clots, stroke, and heart attacks. Wow, you read my mind, Doc. I was just about to ask about risks of side effects with these medications. Well, Maddie, as with any medication, there is always a risk of an allergic reaction. 
However, it turns out that the EPO and IV iron products that we use nowadays have an exceptionally low risk of causing an allergic reaction. The targeted goal to achieve maximal benefits and minimal risks is to use EPO and iron to maintain hemoglobin in the 9 to 11 range. That answers a lot of my questions. I sure feel better knowing more about how my anemia is being treated. That's why we're here, Maddie. Glad we could help you, Maddie. Now, it says here you have some questions about how we protect your bones. So let's schedule another visit to talk about that. <laughs>